So the Pittsburgh Penguins opened their first round series against the Columbus Blue Jackets on Wednesday night, first night of the playoffs, and the Penguins won 3-1. Great game from Pittsburgh. However, this game was not without drama. I check on Twitter before the game, as I usually do, to see the lineups and to see what the status is. And I see that Matt Murray's heard Marvs and Mark Andre Fleury will start in that. And my heart is racing at 50 pounds a minute because I'm freaking out and I'm afraid I'm going to get a heart attack and I am going crazy because Flurry in the playoffs does not inspire confidence. I have zero confidence in Flurry in the playoffs, whether that's fair or not. It's probably not fair, but I've been burned too many times. I've seen him get scored on from basically behind the net. I've seen him play the puck in the playoffs in Columbus, leading to an overtime winning goal. I have seen him do it all. And even though he's been better lately, the Penguins won a cup last year with the common presence and for my sanity and for my nerves and for my heart, I wanted to see Murray in the game. Murray wasn't even dressing. Third string goalie Tristan Jari was dressed. And this is why the Penguins kept Jari up because they figured that Murray probably wasn't 100%. I saw the video after warm-up that looked like he definitely tweaked his groin, did not look pretty, and as a former goalie, groin injuries can be pretty tough. It's not something you want to rush back. The Penguins did say that they have an internal timeline. They're not sharing it with the public, so I don't know what that means, but, I mean, Matt Murray's not even dressing tonight, so I don't think it's going to be good. Maybe they're hoping second round he'll come back and play but who knows if can be playing so well he might have a stern job back i highly doubt that i'm just one i'm waiting for one slip up and jerry goes in the net and jerry's a much more calming presence like murray but he's got one game of nhl experience so it's not really a great situation to be in. Yes, Fleury did win the cup. That was in 2009 when he was still in his 20s and was still good. He's 31 now. It's not really that great anymore. Um, actually, I think he's 32. Yeah, 32 now. Not really that great anymore. Uh, he does not inspire a lot of confidence um, with me, and he's not had a good season. So that was a bit nerve-wracking, but he stepped it up, and he was fantastic against Columbus. I don't know what Pittsburgh was doing the first period. They were asleep. They must have been worried about Murray because they only had three shots, and they stank like a pile of garbage. That was a hot mess, but thanks to Flurry, they got out of it, and they came and played their game the second and third, and then dominated and were the better team, even though the shot count was pretty even. They did let up a bit at the end of the game, but that's score effects. That's pretty common. Most teams do that, but they they definitely got back to the game, and I was a bit skeptical about playing Trevor Daly and only Matta and supposed to playing Rock Stripe, but they both were pretty solid. I thought Matta had a really solid game and Daly looked pretty good. So I mean if they if any of them mess up then you know you have Mark Strait. It's a nice lux nice luxury to have. You can put him right in there and he'll play well, especially in the power play. I still probably would have Mark Strait in instead. But it's again it gives you a nice a nice balance. I don't really like Doomlin and Haynes he's a pairing. I'd rather see Schultz and Doomlin. I think that'd be a really solid pairing, but then you have Haynes and Cole. And they're kind of they're kind of flat footed, so I could see why Sullivan would do that. Malkin came back with a vengeance. He was fantastic. His line with Kessel and Rust was the Penguins' best line all night. Kessel was on his game. That goal by Kessel, patent fill shot, no chance for Bobrovsky. Sick shot. Goal by Rust. Rust is getting it done again, stepping up for playoffs. And Nick Bonino as well. Does not do much in the regular season, but started to turn on at the end of the game. And scored another nice goal. I just wish I was listening to the Punjabi broadcast of that so I could have heard Benino, 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 Benino. I can't even do it. But a great game from him. Solid defensive effort. effort. Uh, and there's pretty balanced in terms of ice time. And that's what's going to have to happen with the absence of Chris Letang. You know, Justin Schultz is definitely the most offensive guy now, but they don't really have a go to guy. It's going to be a win by committee, which we saw. And uh, even though the Penguins. You know, are still battling some injuries. They are getting healthier. Kunitz is going to be out for a while, which actually bit or loss, it looks like. But it looks like Hagelin could be coming back for this round, which would be huge because Columbus is already having trouble handling Pittsburgh speed as it is. You add in Hagelin, who's their fastest player, and automatically just good luck, Columbus. But, you know, I thought I think Rowney's done an admirable job stepping up um, in, in his absence on the fourth line. Yeah, he's looked good there. And they also have Archibald, who they can put in as well. 
but yeah, you add Hagelin and this, this forward depth is definitely better than last year because you're taking away Eric Fair and you're putting in Jake Gunsel, who's just looked sick. And that top line is so good. I'm seeing some articles out there saying Pittsburgh's more top heavy than last year. Um, I don't really see how that's happening. I mean, maybe in terms of production, but if you look at the balance on paper, it's, it's deeper than last year. I don't think they're really that top heavy. I mean, the third and fourth line have really been getting it done lately. And in playoffs, it's ultimately what got Pittsburgh the cup. So I think, you know, their forward group's better. Their defense group uh, is better now, except they don't have Latang, so that's tough. But, you know, I definitely think that they can beat Columbus without Latang. Um, I mean, they're already, they're already down by one, which is huge. Next game is tonight, also in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's an excellent home team. It'd be great to get those two wins at home right out of the way because then you're going into Columbus. It's a tough building to win in. That cannon is so annoying. And if you can go already down 2-0, that's great because even if you lose both games in Columbus, hey, it's tied 2-2. You're coming back to finish. You're coming back to another home game. You can get another series lead, you know? And then you can go back and finish it off in Columbus or come back and finish it off as home. And the Penguins have shown they've exercised their Game 7 home demons based on what they did last year. So I don't think that that's a factor. You know, they had one of the best home records in the league. So I think that they get another win tonight at home. That's huge. Um, but Fleury's playing. So, you know, this could either go really good for him or really bad. And we can see Jari in the net and, you know, all hell breaks loose. So I hope that's not the case. I hope he plays well. But at the same time, I'm I'm holding I'm holding my breath. I'm waiting waiting for him to make a mistake, just because I've seen it so many times in the playoffs, and it's the reason why Pittsburgh was so bad, like two, three years in a row. 2012 was Gong Show. 2013 he lost his spot. 2014 he you know he wasn't great in that Columbus series. Um, team didn't help him out, but you know it's a big reason why Pittsburgh's not done well lately. And now that we have that goalie and he's injured, it's, it's frustrating, but you know, Matt Murray didn't have a lot of experience when he went in there last year and they won the cup. And I didn't think that they could get it done with a rookie goalie. And maybe Jari can be the guy this year. He plays a lot like Murray. He's won a Memorial cup. So yes, it's a junior level, but he does know how to play in big situations. And I think in that, that moment, your adrenaline kicks in, you just do whatever you can to win. And uh, he'd be facing Columbus, who I don't think is as strong as the team as New York. So you never know. I mean, their goaltending situation is still pretty good, but not having Murray is definitely very worrying. Um, hopefully he's back for the next round, especially if it's against Washington, because if Pittsburgh doesn't have Murray or Latang, it could be a short series against Washington, because then you're facing Braden Holby, the Vez reigning Vezin Trophy winner, who Matt Murray outplayed last year. Yeah, good luck with that, Flurry. Um... So that's all I have for this game, but solid effort by the Penguins. I loved how they did not give in to Columbus's physicality. John Torello once again tried to beat them down, but Penguins used their speed, had the puck more, and won the game, and that's ultimately how hockey is. And John Torello is going to be physical. That's fine. We're just going to play, as Max Sullivan says. So far, it's just playing one versus physicality zero. So that's all I have for this video. Please like if you like. Subscribe if you really like it. Who stood out to you in the game? What do you think of the series uh, so far? What do you think of the other series so far? And uh, let's go Penguins. Bye for now.